to a double shot, except for this time, we're going to do an episode for underrated metal album series. Yes. And I didn't number these episodes, um, but we're going to take a trip all the way back to 1995. And the third studio release by Iced Earth. I'm talking about the very underrated Burnt Offerings. As you can see, I still got the original album cover. Yes. And this was the very first Iced Earth album I ever heard. It's kind of weird. I discovered Iced Earth around 1997 in a uh, Hit Parader magazine, of all things. Um, they had an article in there from Hit Parader magazine, or from Century of Media Records, about, you know, albums that was coming out that year. And the very first album I saw was Days of Purgatory. However, it wasn't until 1999 when I actually heard Iced Earth. I mean, me and my one buddy were, like, talking about buying an Ice Earth CD, but we didn't know what to expect from it, which is kind of dumb from us after seeing the album covers. So finally, around July, or, yeah, around July of 1999, I was at a, uh, Sam Goodies, I think that's what the record shop was called, and, um, I decided to buy Burn Offerings. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to talk about this album. This undoubtedly and unquestionably is the darkest, most evil, and heaviest Iced Earth album. I mean, this album's just absolutely amazing, in my opinion. I still like it all these years later, 20 years later, after, you know, hearing Iced Earth and this album for the very first time. So, lineup-wise, you got John Schaefer on rhythm guitars and the main songwriter. You got Matthew Barlow on vocals, which this would be his first album with the band. Yes, and you got Randy Sawyer on lead guitars. You got David Abel on bass and drummer... Rodney Greeley. I think I'm pronouncing that right, kind of hard to read. And if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I, I apologize. It's the only album he did with the band, um, yeah. But this album's phenomenal. That's why we're talking about it today. Opening track, Bird Offerings, right away, begins with this creepy, eerie, horror film-like beginning. Like, almost like a Halloween type of beginning. Then it gets really heavy and thrashy, you know. And there's some pretty aggressive vocal work on this track. I believe John Schaefer might be doing the aggressive parts. And obviously Matthew Barlow's doing the operatic parts. But this track is phenomenal. It's just so killer. It's so heavy. It's so dark, you know. Look what your God has done to me. Love it, love it, love it. Last December would be next. One of the more, you know, groovy tracks, I guess you would say, but it's pretty daggone heavy. Again, you know, it begins pretty melodic and dark, then it just turns into a straight-up heavy track. Good stuff, great playing. Diary, the next track. Pretty damn epic, a good bit of musical changes in this track, some pretty cool time signatures throughout this track. Um, one of the parts of this track I talked about in my other video would be formerly a part used in Purgatory um, under, um, I believe, the original version of uh, Dracula, yeah, from Purgatory. The middle melodic part, you know. But Diary is one of my favorites on here. Tremendous vocals by Matthew Barlow. Um, yeah. Again, another song with a dark atmosphere to it. And we got Brainwashed. Which, man, what a great track. What a great track. 
man, I would love to see Eister play these tracks live, dude. They're so good. But John Schaefer don't like the album. And of course, around this time, you know, they were going through a very dark period. Jim Morrison's wife had died at this time. John Schaefer was practically broken, dealing with problems from the record company at the time. You know, just a lot of dark shit going on when they made this freaking album. And you can definitely hear it on this album. Strangely, too, this would be the lowest selling Ice Earth album. But of course, around 1995, you know, a lot of people really didn't know who Ice Earth, Earth was, you know. Okay, anyways. Oh, Brainwashed. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got a little distracted there. What a great track, man. Basically about people being brainwashed. It's what I get from this track. You know? Just cool lyrics in this track, you know? Yeah. Definitely dedicated to all the sheep out there, you know? All the followers. And the people who are non-free free thinkers. A very, very heavy, heavy track. Tremendous double bass work by Rodney on this track. Killer, killer riffs. Alright, now we get into the second half of this album. Burning Oasis. Uh, don't mind me if I'm moving around, it's pretty hot. I turned off the fan to do this review. Burning Oasis. This is a different version of Burning Oasis, not the purgatory version of it. Killer, killer track. I like this version too, man. This is such a cool song. It's so dark. Like the middle section is just so dark. Then Matthew Barlow comes in with these freaking operatic screams that are just so killer, you know. Alright, then we get into Creator Failure. You know? <sighs> Another tremendous track. <laughs> like, we're into track six and there's not a weak track on here. It's tremendous heaviness, epicness. Again, another dark song. Dark melodies in there, some really heavy, ferocious riffing going on, and just great vocals by Matthew Barlow. Okay. The Pure Spirit. Now, this was written by Dave Abel. Um, just a dark, beautiful acoustic piece, a little under two minutes long. Very beautiful, very dark, you know. Then it leads into the fanatic, the epic, the over 16 minute Dante's Inferno. First time I heard this, I was blown away. I was just blown away. I couldn't believe how orchestratedly written this track was. All the time signatures, all the dark atmospheres in this track. The killer rhythms, the vocals, the orchestration part. And obviously it's about the book Dante's Inferno, you know, Virgil and the Seven Gates to Hell, you know, something like that. Killer, killer, killer stuff. And that's pretty much a burn off right man. If you haven't heard this, you need to get it. You need to get it. It's a perfect album. It's very underrated. I think anymore, Iced Earth is very underrated. You don't see a lot of people talk about Iced Earth anymore. Well, I've been talking about them on my channel, you know. I think they deserve it. To me, they're one of the best bands to come out in the last 20 years. 20 to 29 years, you know. Tremendous stuff, man. Tremendous stuff. It definitely pick it up. Alright, that's it for this episode of Underrated Metal Albums. Keep it metal.